Hi, I'm Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew. Easy embellishment is the topic for the day. I want to show you how to um, embellish a plain blouse with pin tucks and channel stitching. So let's take a look at the garment. Again, very simple, kind of a basic blouse style, kind of a um, cool little uh, accent with that peplum. But ordinary um, fabric, just plain, no print, nothing fancy about it. So what I went ahead and did is added pin tucks to a front yoke and pin tucks to a back yoke. Let me swirl her around here so you can see the back there. Very pretty textured look and very easy to do. And then I added one more little accent by adding what I like to call channel stitching. Channel stitching is just a fancy word for top stitching, really close rows together. So we're gonna use a couple different specialty feet and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can accomplish both of those. Let's talk about the pattern first of all. We always start with a pattern and again, we usually modify it somehow and make it our own and make it, um, make it work for the design style. So I originally looked for a pattern that had a yoke and I knew I wanted to do both a front yoke and a back yoke. So I did find one that had both, but then I found this beautiful pattern with that um, peplum on it and that, that, that really like sucked me in. So I knew I had to use that one. Well, I have a back yoke on that. I already had a back yoke pattern, but I didn't have a front yoke. So no problem, that's easy to, easy to make your own. All I did was decided about how deep I wanted that yoke to be. Usually you want that um, above the uh, armhole notches where it's a relatively straight area of the arm side where the sleeve is going in. So I just drew a line where I wanted to finish that. And then I laid a piece of tracing, um, pattern tracing cloth over the top of that. And then I added seam allowance below the line that I drew. And then I added seam allowance above the line that I drew. So when I cut out my blouse fabric, I simply folded this on this line so that I had my front lower piece and then I had my my yoke piece. <clears throat> Again, I already had the back, so I was good to go. So I wanna take you over to the machine now and actually show you how I um, created these pin tucks. All right, what do we need supply-wise? Well, we wanna start with two, spool, two spools of thread that match. Now I realize these are, we've got a little different shading here, but if you're gonna do pin tucks, you're gonna need two spools of the exact same type of thread, exact weight of thread, and exact same color. So I've already got mine in the machine there. Um, we're also gonna need a twin needle. So I've got a two millimeter twin needle here. This one actually came with my machine, so I was already set for that. And then we need a pin tuck foot. So I want you to look at the front, uh, front side of this foot, the top side of it, and then I'm gonna flip it over and show you the bottom side. There are grooves in that foot, and you're gonna see how those come into play when I do the actual pin tucking. With a pin tuck foot, very often will come uh, pin tuck uh, covers, cord guides are what these actually are for the machine so that we can feed a cord and you're gonna see me do that too. They may give you a couple different ones depending on your machine, you're gonna see what fits. When we thread for a twin needle, which I'm gonna show you step by step on that, you may also get an auxiliary spool pin. So it's very important when you're threading for a twin needle for your machine, to see what the manual guidelines are because every machine might be just a little, a little bit different. The basic threading is pretty much the same, but you might have a little bit of, um, of a change there. So let me move these aside. This is the cover that I actually need. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pop the standard cover off. I'm gonna set that aside. And you may see my little crazy attachment here. Well, I've got a cord guide for my cord to go through the hole and feed into the pin tuck foot when I put that on. But it's, it's really handy to have just a, a, a small uh, cocktail style straw and I taped it to the machine so I can feed a longer length of my cord and make sure I keep um, straight there. So I'm gonna feed this through the hole in the cord guide that covers my bobbin case and it's gonna come up into that little notch. Snap that on. Make sure I have that pulled back so it's coming right through the notch, going straight back. I'm now gonna take off my regular presser foot and I'm gonna attach this fun little pin tuck foot. Now pin tuck feet have uh, multiple slots so that you can do various spacing. So I'm just gonna show you on a, on a little sample here, but essentially it's the same thing that I did when I did my yokes. I cut out a piece, 
cut it larger than my, my yoke pattern, both width and height. And you want to do that because you have a tendency when you first start stitching the yoke, or the pin tucks rather, and you end the stitching that may not be the prettiest part, so you want to be able to, to crop it down. Now, how do you know how big of a piece to cut? Well, the only way to tell, because every fabric's going to be different, how many tucks you do, and the spacing is going to be different, you're going on to do a sample. So I usually stitch about an inch row of pin tucks, measure my fabric before, and measure it after and then I can see how much I'm taking up when I'm actually stitching that. All right, so I'm going to just get that in position. I want to show you now how to thread the machine. So again, I've got I'm following the manual. It tells me to go ahead and thread this one here, normal standard way. So I'm going to thread that just like I would except that I am not going to use my automatic needle threader, so hopefully I won't need to use my cheater glasses here. Let's see if I can get that eye of the needle threaded. Nope, I'm going to need the cheater glasses for that. Okay. Because this is a two, mil two millimeter needle, that means it's the, the spacing between the two needle tips is two millimeters. That's pretty small eye, so that's a little bit harder for me to see without my cheaters. All right, the second one is ready to go here from the auxiliary spool pin. I'm gonna thread that in the exact same way, but you're gonna see in a second here, I'm gonna have one little difference. There's one final thread guide that's directly above um, the needle bar, okay? And we're not going to thread that, so. I'm going to just get this needle threaded. We want to keep that one on the outside so that it keeps the um, threads just a little bit separate from one another. Okay, so I've got that in. And while I'm getting this straightened out, I'm going to tell you I have selected a center needle straight stitch. And I have already um, shortened my stitch length to 2.0. And I'm just going to go right down the middle there. Again, that cord's going to feed right through. Oop, I already went a little bit off, but you'll forgive me for that. <clears throat> it's hard to talk and sew all at the same time. So I'm going to raise my needle up. And you can see, even though that's a little bit skewed, that is um, one line. So then I would go back, and I would be able to, I'm going to start there where it's a little bit straighter. I would be able to skip over however many grooves I want and stitch a second line of pin tucks. And I could go on and on and on until I get exactly the amount that I need. Now you also want to remember not to use your um, thread cutter when you do this. So hopefully you get a picture of that, okay? And normally I would cut my cord. Let me grab my scissors because if I don't, that's going to get to be um, a tangled mess. So you just leave a little bit of a tail and then go from the next one, the next one. Hopefully you get the idea of how straight you would have that when you're, when you're doing it correctly. Okay, so let me go back over the table. I'm going to show you my finished piece of this, okay? There you go. I've got a whole nice band there. I would simply take my pattern, lay it on top, and make sure it matches and cut it out. I could do the same thing with a pocket. I could do all kinds of different pieces. So now let me show you how, to, how I did that channel stitching. I'm going to go back over to the machine. Okay, I have removed my pin tuck foot and I have removed my twin needle. I am back to a single needle, standard needle, and I'm going to switch now to another foot. This is called a stitch guide foot, and this foot has grooves that extend far out into the, um, the right-hand side, and this particular one has the, each one of those grooves colored in red, so it makes it really easy to see. I love using this foot for multiple lines of top stitching, which is essentially what that what that channel stitching is. And you know, you think about it, you, you look at that cuff and it's just a simple technique, but it really, really creates a beautiful, beautiful result. So I'm just gonna pick one edge to start and I'm gonna try to be straighter this time from my last adventure there. Okay, and I'm gonna do my first line of stitching. And again, I can um, lengthen that stitch a little bit. Um, you know, whatever, whatever I like. Normally with heavier fabric, I use a little bit of a longer stitch length and with lighter fabric, I usually use a little bit, a little bit shorter. Now I'm back to being able to use my um, cutter. So I've got one nice even edge. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up 
with one of those red lines. Now I'm choosing to use the, the third line in from that edge. I'm gonna guide that right along the first line of stitching. And that's gonna give me a really closely spaced top stitch. Now I am gonna have to concentrate on this a little bit. So I'm gonna keep my head down. Because the, the trick with this is you're not watching the needle, you are watching the previous line of stitching and lining it up with that one particular guide that is uh, engraved onto that foot, okay? So there I go, I got a second line. I can do another one. Again, I'm gonna follow that same third line. So this is a little bit slow. Um, you need to be really careful when you're doing it because uh, especially if you're using contrasting thread on uh, a contrast color of fabric, it's really gonna show. Um, think about that when you, when you decide what color you wanna use. I want you to make sure that you can, you can see this, but it's um, just a beautiful way to add multiple rows. It kind of even helps um, almost like uh, give a little bit more body to an area like a cuff and just helps kind of, you know, give it a little bit more, more substance. I love the look of tone on tone. That's one of my favorite um, techniques of all types of sewing when you're using thread that matches closely to your fabric, maybe just a, a couple shades darker, it looks really pretty. So let me show you another sample here. I've got um, one already finished here that you can see I did. And in this case, I've got lots of rows stitched and look how perfectly and evenly those were stitched. That's all from that wonderful um, guideline that I have in the foot so that I don't have to make markings on my fabric. That would be another way to do it, but that's gonna mean I'm gonna have a lot of tedious marking to do and I'm gonna have a lot of marks to remove. Let's talk about thread for a minute. I use standard, ordinary, regular weight sewing thread, but you will find threads that are a little bit thicker. So you may wanna consider that when you're doing um, sporting weight. That's what I did on here. I used just a little bit um, thicker thread so that it just had a little bit more uh, of a standout feature to it. And then in the bobbin, I always like to stick to using standard weight sewing thread in the bobbin. So I found a color that matched my thicker thread, and then that's what I wound the bobbin with, and that's what I used. So that's what I paired together. So great combination, gives you a really good, um, nice finish. So let's pop back over to the garment and just take another look at all the details on there, okay? So there we go, we've got pin tucks here on the front, we've got pin tucks here on the back. You saw how I created you know, a whole band of fabric, used a, um, a yoke there, and just put my pattern right over it, centered it right on top so I got perfectly evenly you know spaced from edge to edge I got a nice clean look and then I complemented those cuffs with channel stitching so we've got really good details here on a plain blouse making it very very special be sure to visit the website we've got complete instructions for you so that you can make your own pin tuck and channel stitch blouse